my my first doctor, my first psychiatrist was Dr. Corbett Thickpen, who he and Dr. Cleckley wrote the book Three Faces of Eve. Uh, you know, I've, I've I've had many many doctors over the years, and that firm. Um, you know, they had patients. They were inquiring minds. Those people were real scientists. Because I remember, I didn't have a 15-minute appointment um, after Mom and Dad didn't want to have shock treatments that Dr. Thickpin uh, suggested. Uh, I, I saw Dr. Chambers. And we had our appointments. Yes, it was expensive. It was private. Um... But those people cared. You know, the biggest thing that Dr. Chambers ever, to ever told me, he said, exercise often. It's great for your brain. And then Dr. Vicki Anderson, she was another good one at MCG in 97, who put me on Depica. Um, she said, eat small meals during the day. It's good for your neurochemicals. Two best advice. And then Priscilla Gilman, at MCG, she was good too. Um, doctors today don't care. I think there's so much mental illness going on that we're a number and a paycheck from the government. I, I don't see that. I, you know, I, I, uh, I had no other doctors that. Um, really cared or wanted to know what I thought. Dr. Benachman here in Lancaster, PA, in January, or a little late January, I think it was, the first of February this year, I walked in and uh, he was kind of angry when I walked in. And he said, I reviewed your records. So, um, you know, he says, I want to change medicine. I said, well, you know, Dr. Gilman gave it to me for a short while, but I like Risperdal better, and went back to it. She let me go back to it, and he says, "Well, um, basically, you know," he said, "Well, we don't agree," and he dismissed me. I couldn't find a doctor when I moved to Lancaster. The only place I get was like twenty-five miles, thirty miles out, and it snows here in the winter. I said, "I don't want to be driving in that to get to a doctor. You got to be there once a month, and a therapist." I didn't need therapy. Uh, well, I, I didn't think I did, but no therapist. One therapist. She was at, um, what was that? Uh, George Regional. That's where I met her. And she taught me about mindfulness. And she even came to my graduation for um, accounting in 1991. My mom didn't even come. And my dad was in Germany getting my, helping my step-uncle uh, get the controlship of Coca-Cola International in Berlin, which he did. Dad's best friend's son married into the, the dynasty. So, um, you know, I, our doctors today are, are, are meat doctors. That's just all I got to say about psychiatrists today. Uh, I don't, I haven't seen I've I've had a lot of them. Um, well, you know what? Uh, Dr. Gerard, uh, Robert Gerard at Mount Sinai, he was my last doctor before I came to um, Lancaster. And, and I could talk with him. He didn't understand what I was saying, but then he did. I guess he did a little bit of research because I have a, and, you know, part of it, I guess, is, is is metformin, a B12 shortage, folate. And it just got worse and worse. And I thought, am I developing MS? Um, but he was, he's a good doctor. He's a young doctor. And he went to Einstein uh, Medical School. Uh, but doctors, uh, you know, I had one, one therapist, um, you had to see a therapist in South Carolina every month, and uh, he was a he was a 
He was a good guy. He never helped me with anything, but we just had a good time. <laughs> you know? Um, and from what I've discovered, um, we all need, I guess we need the doctors to write medicines, but we need the um, psychologists to be Freudian. Because it's really that kind of depth of thing. And I have not had a single therapist. I, I think you give a teenager a job just to talk with you. And you got to have eight years to be a doctor and, you know, whatever. Um, it's just stupid. So, um, Dickman and Cleckley, they were scientists, you know. They took themselves seriously, and they took each patient seriously. As a person now, I, I, felt, I felt a friend, you know, with them to a degree. I remember the first time that day that it happened, just grandiose stuff. Um, Dr. Thickpin came in and he sat down, his, the chair back was right here, and he says, so, uh, wanna tell me what's going on? That was the first thing. And um, we just talked, like I'm talking to you right now. And he didn't, yeah, he was, obviously he was thinking, but doctors, they're cold. And uh, therapists are okay, but they need to be trained in something really useful. <sighs> then it comes to why do we have mental illness? We've got a society that's left, left God. Um, our kids, we don't have prayer in school anymore. Um, you know, people are leaving the church, young kids, I, I, a small percentage, you know, the, um, whatever the last generation is that even want to know God or have anything to do with God. And um, without wisdom of Proverbs, everybody needs to study Proverbs. Um, you know, get a, get a, you know, you might not understand it just reading it out of the King James, but get a commentary on it and learn how God thinks. You know, I've been studying Mike Murdoch since the 90s. And, you know, his, his thing, he loved Solomon out of the Bible, and his thing is wisdom. And um, wisdom will help you solve your problems. Listening to the Holy Spirit, because he'll guide you in anything. You can tell the Holy Spirit, I want to be a millionaire, billionaire. And uh, if you're in the will of God, as Rabbi Jonathan Kahn says, he's a Christian, um, that's where it'd be. And when you're in the will of God, God's going to work with you. You know, he's going to point out what you need to know. And I was, you know, I was saved when I was, what was it? I was saved when I was 10 years old. And um, I didn't ask God questions. We talked all the time. Uh, I always prayed. Maybe not when I, when I was young, but when all this happened, I really prayed. But you got to ask the right questions. And one of the biggest things I asked, I studied with a mastering engineer um, uh, in Atlanta, uh, Earl Holder. He uh, masters for public enemy, Chuck D, a bunch of people. And uh, when I bought his software, he was gracious enough to teach me how to operate. I, I didn't do good. You know, and then I finally got okay. Now I'm a good mastering engineer, a real good mastering engineer. I got the right toys, and uh, so after I'd been studying mastering for a while and looking at the way frequencies do, I, you know, get on a record, play on the radio. I, I told, I said, Lord, I said, master me like Earl Holder masters the record. That was many years ago, and I noticed a difference. And um, I prayed that prayer just a few months ago. And look what I got. Well, you don't know, but I do know. I'm free. I don't. I, I don't mind taking risks at all now. I know I've got a problem with the thyroid. 
Because what else gives you mass energy? You know, your thyroid keep you down, your thyroid keep you up. Um, so one milligram of Risperdal and I'm, I'm good to go. I was at the pool this morning. I work out most every day for, well, been 90 minutes, hour, 48 minutes lately. And um, when I got there this morning, I had too much energy. I don't have any thoughts. You know, it's just uncomfortable energy. Level. So I took another milligram of Risperdal and I'm okay. I, I did my workout and came home. Um, when we left God out of, of our children, Satan comes in because there's not going to be a vacuum. I, there, there's no vacuum. You know, the world has God and Satan. You invite one or the other. So, um, mental illness also is because our FDA, which needs to be trashed, allows so much toxins. Your body can take so much toxin, but you know, they don't, you don't know the the liver doesn't process these toxins. It'll take some things out, but it stores it in fat. How many fat people you see lately? And how's that grown? We're toxic cesspools walking around here. How does that affect your mind? You know, your blood's connected to your fat. So this combinatorial thing, you just don't know what happened. But also, all the sexual stuff going on. Uh, just think of all the kids that uh, have been molested. The priests, the Catholic priests, they're, they're, they're messing up tens of thousands of people. And um, maybe not everybody. I don't, I don't say that act in itself is traumatic. But... Uh, well, it's got to cause something. You know, there's balances. And you knock things out of balance, you get different things for different people. And then there's other traumas. You know, you had a car wreck. My, my roommate, she uh, went in on the house with me. Um, she wanted to be on a mortgage, so I had another house picked, but we got this one. Uh, she had a car wreck 11 years ago. She had 200 IQ. She was the top student, one of the top three with SAT scores. She had everything going for her. Beautiful. Her cousin's Anne Hathaway. And um, so she got problems. I thought I, I could help her solve them, which, you know, well, she went back to New York and now she's not here. But, you know, I make payments. And I'm renting out to a couple. But, um, you know, it can be other traumas, it doesn't have to be sex. Um, it, it can be losing your husband, or losing your wife, losing a child. But it's something that's traumatic that, that's going to start. I think that's where it is. And for other people, anything traumatic has a value, a, a strong value. And if it gets perverted, and if you're not trained, as a Christian, been going to Sunday school, and, and you applied yourself, um, you don't understand God, and don't lean on God, then you're leaning on, you know, whatever comes, the wind blows. Um, so America has fallen into that uh, since the Bible was taken out of school, and, and, and given a prominence, and the Ten Commandments have been taken out everywhere. So, um, we've got a medical profession that has standards of care. You know, if a doctor doesn't do standards of care, they can lose their license. And standards of care is very rigid. We've got doctors that are brilliant, you know, but they have to act within a tiny place. Well, why do you, in the hell you got a, a brilliant doctor? I mean, you can get a you know, teenager. They hand out drugs, they just read, oh, it says for this, you get this, there's five different ones, pick one. You know, they'll come back if it doesn't work. <laughs> Whereas, a long time ago, um, some doctors had home remedies. I had a doctor tell me, we can't do that. We, we don't believe in that. 
You know, I don't care what you don't believe in. That's just dumb. Uh, if you turn your back on knowledge, uh, but they got standards of care, and that needs to be gone. You know, our Congress needs to get rid of standards of care. I, I think you need to protect and uh, patients. I don't think you need to shield them from real knowledge. And if you have it, and every doctor should be looking for healing. Healing can be done. It's not a God thing, you know. God can heal you, but uh, um, there's other things he's put here to heal. In, in Revelation it said, in the end, all the nations will be healed by the trees on the river. Well, those trees are, are here right now. Genesis, six days, it was complete creation. If you don't believe in the Bible, well, this is tough, but that's the way it is. Uh, Einstein even says there has to be a grand scheme created for all of this, and other, other scientists have said that. I, I did a study, I did a paper on, in physics in high school on uh, theory of relativity. It, you know, it was okay. I don't understand the math, but I understand the process, just like I understand what I understand right now. I don't understand. I listened to Dr. Bergman, John Bergman today, DO, chiropractor. Uh, used to be a pathologist for a came a uh, DO. And um, he was talking about things that I didn't... I, there was a 1600s doctor, Robert somebody. He, I discovered... What he already said in the 1600s about how to, you gotta, you gotta be nutritious, you gotta feed your body right. Our government's not allowing good food. We got GMO. It's, it's wrecking our body. It's full of glyphosate. You don't get that off. It causes cancer. It causes so many other myriad things. We're feeding our population poison. And, uh, you know, it's corporate farmers now. We've killed off the, the old farmers incorporated everything and it's all about the dollar that's another thing so um, there's a lot more but we got poison in our air poison in our water we've got chemtrails who knows how that's affecting the electrical part of your body a lot of that's metals um, you know uh, got cadmium in there they got aluminum in there uh, just look at the list, and and you're breathing this in different places. Uh, in Pennsylvania, I don't really see much of any chemtrails. Um, so we got toxins. Read a study, average American, according to this study, you know what? It, it was a fairly small study. 145 toxins. Now, think about this. There's some people that just eat just a few types of foods. Well, they're going to be loaded with those toxins. We don't know. Those doctors, those FDA people, they don't know. They, they're going to get a, a specific disease out of that. Other people eat a wide variety, so they got a wide variety of toxins. Don't know the outcome of that, but a little bit's not going to hurt you. Uh, I started out with the talking about thick thin and cleckly and their model they, they should be a model but we also should have something to reduce all this mental illness we're 25 percent in this country one in four people has mental illness to various degree and uh, you know Israel's got seven percent uh, UK's got 12 percent you gotta wonder we've got a schizophrenic government we had one under Obama. It was totally schizophrenic, and uh, it's been going that way 50 years, I, I guess something like that. That's what I've what I've heard, but um, we don't make sense, and that wears off on the public. They just keep saying, you know, what makes sense, and they're confused. Confusion leads to more confusion. Uh, they have children. Are confused. Confusion just leads to more confusion. The author of confusion is Satan. So uh, Donald Trump is getting rid of Satan, and um, we need to support him. He's got a, a great, 
great view for this country, and it's simple in a way, and simple works good. God's simple. God's got a sense of humor. Yeah, you know, I'll be in a store, I'll, and I'll see two things, and I and I, I talk with God, and I'm not schizophrenic. Um, I talk with God, and and uh, Charles Stanley, Reverend, uh, Pastor Charles Stanley, got a book I wrote. God about it many years ago. I was real young. Uh, how to listen to God, and that helped me. Um, but anyway, I'll be in the store and I'll see two things, and they may have similar price, but I'm very particular about what I use. So, you know, sometimes God will say oh, it's six and a half dozen. <laughs> yeah. uh, he's got a lot of a lot of humor in him, and uh, uh, that's, that's a side of him. God is not. You know, the, you will do this. He's not the Moses God. Uh, I don't think he's ever, he hadn't changed. He said, I'm saying. Um, you know, and, oh God, that's another story. But the Canaanites were descendants of the Watchers who created the Nephilim, which uh, the giants came from. And remember Joshua said, we look like grasshoppers to them. Well, he wasn't kidding, you know, but the Jews went in, those that decided, and, and they killed them all. God said kill them all because they were they were evil. Um, and people take that, oh, he said kill them all. He's a vicious God. Well, he's not a vicious God. You got to, the Bible's complex. If we live 10 more thousand years here, we're not going to understand half of God. We never will. But there will all be, always be more to, to learn uh, from the Bible. And we need to bring ourselves up in the Word because it protects us. Ephesians 6, just put on the armor of God. And this nation needs to do that. And we need to get back to God. We won't have all this mental confusion, and we can heal it because we'll have people that listen to God individually and as a doctor. You know, a great doctor should be able to heal you because if they're listening to God, they got all this $300,000 of education, the best, the best, and they can use it. But most of the doctors I see, I don't, I don't, they're not Christians. There are some, but uh, I, I just run into people that don't know God. And especially in New York City, uh, oh God, I write a book about my experience the first five years in, in New York City. And I found some good doctors. Um, and the way the mentally ill are treated uh, we treated, uh, you know, uh, Beth Israel treated me better, but it, it was still like, you know, you're a criminal. They, they uh, um, Presbyterian Hospital in New York, I was uh, close by, and uh, I had to go there a couple of times. People gave me the wrong prescription. You know, I was taking Depco, and they gave me the, the short-term stuff, not the ER. And I wound up, I walked in, and I said, I was having you know, energy, but I didn't have any thoughts with it. And um, so I told them, I said, will you, will you lock me up right now? They said, no, you got to wait your turn. I said, oh, shoot. Uh, I get in, and, and these these cops in there, they, they you know, for the mentally ill, they guard you with a gun. You know, they got guns. I, I know it's dangerous in New York in, in some ways. I could walk down the street any time of night and feel safe in most places at East New York. Uh, but those people, eh, not all of them, but the vast majority of them, they treat you like a criminal. Same same thing here in, in Lancaster, PA. Um, these doctors are clueless. They don't know anything. They're, they're trained, but... Um, we got to change. We got to treat everybody. If if they've got a cold, if they've got schizophrenia, yeah, whatever, um, 
I'm just telling it like it is. That's why I've seen it. I, I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a funny guy, you know. I'm easy to get along with. I made lots of friends in my life, way beyond my means. You know, I've been, well, I've been living on Social Security since 85. And uh, there's some good things happening. As a matter of fact, in 1981, I was taking trifluoparazine, I think it was, or maybe it's how it all one milligram. Uh, the manager of The Who offered me an artist management contract, Howie Zaman. And uh, he managed, yes, that's, that's what my friend, uh, he's Dr. Birnbaum, told me. He's from Philadelphia. I was teaching him guitar at Fort Gordon. And he said he managed, yes, too. But that drug, if I missed a day of practice, it was like it was a week. And I said, I can't deal with that. So I took a 50% academic scholarship at the University of Miami uh, right after that. That's another story. Um, we got to get back to God. We got to get back to people. Because you're mentally ill doesn't mean you're not a person. You got everything everybody else has. Um, we're all humans. And you talk about the racism that's going on in Charlottesville, around this country. There's racism going on in, in mental health. Um, the, I, I just have, you know, my gut is telling me, I got a good gut. Dr. Josh Axe healed that nearly two years ago. And um, I got gut instincts. And if you don't have good gut instincts, you're not going to have a good brain. That's another issue, too. Heal the gut, your brain works better. Now they're telling you that there's a small brain in your heart. They found cells that uh, are brain cells, neuronal brain cells. So you got three, three uh, brains to work with. So, you know, people think with their heart. Well, they, they, they got a brain there. Uh, no, we we just have to get back to the basics and treat everybody. Anybody's got a mental illness, they they're just as human as the person that has no problems. You know, treat them the same. Treat them with respect. Treat them with love. Give them the best care. You know that you've been trained with. That needs to change, and um, we'll have a less sick country and make America great again, because that will. We need to change our food supply. We need to have good food. We have processed foods everywhere. It's killing everybody. They're loaded with toxins. I don't eat them. And... Um, the government has to be much more careful about what they allow as a food, you know? And and in cosmetics, what do you allow in cosmetics? Um, you know, Dr. What's his name? Origins. He makes stuff, designs stuff for Origins. I, I, I found out about it in New York. Wasn't Dr. Wall, I don't think. Maybe, maybe it was. Yeah, Dr. Wall. Andrew Wall. Um, it's all natural. It don't cost more to be natural. It takes more care, you know, I guess, and a little more time. And, oh, this is getting off the path. When's the last time you had a refrigerator the last 30 or 40 years? <laughs> That's America. The shoes are throwaway. We need leather shoes. We're connected to the earth. We get the earth. The earth is the hugest antioxidant around us. Uh, check that out. Grounding, earthing. There's so many things uh, that, that lead to good health. And uh, in fact, earthing's going to, um, you know, you do that regularly, uh, risk of heart attack and stroke goes down 40%. Dr. Oz says take a one a day. You know, people will tell you the vitamins are no good, they, they demonize everything that's good. Uh, but Dr. Oz says, and I, I, I you know, I, I, he's an expert, and um, he says one a day a day will extend your life eight years. Flossing your teeth, brushing your teeth, extends your life. Yet, hey, what about this? 
You don't get health care in dental. Dental gets a free ride. They get the charge. Um, dental is one of the most important things, and yet we don't um, have good insurance unless it really costs for dental. But then we're being fed sugary foods, it rots your teeth. That's another story. Um, we need to we need to get like uh, thick pen and Cleckley. My father was pretty rich, you know, and uh, he could afford them. So um, we need that for everybody because we're all better off. And the whole black thing. I'm, I'm writing a book. Uh, you know, industrial revolution probably was the end of the modern blacks that were sold into slavery in the 1600s, 1700s uh, by the Muslims. Yeah, so they're the ones that did it. They got 20 million black slaves right now in Islam. And in Northern Africa, and I, you know, I guess the other countries, I don't know exactly where they are. And they're not tied to the land. You know, um, one of my tenants, she had it. She's from East European, uh, Africa, all over the place genetically. But they don't have land, you know. I know, I, I go back to 1638 in London. I go back to Eric the Red. He was a rodent. And um, his son married into the, the king of Ireland. So I kind of got some Irish features, but... There were rodents who were kings in, um, in Eng uh, not England, Germany, around 1,000. It's, it's called Amistad now. It was rodents that emerged. And, um, and then there were you know, kings in, uh, around Zurich before it was Switzerland. And then they came from Normandy with Duke of Normandy and got lands in England, uh, 1066. So got a got a rich history, um, but blacks can't trace anything like that, uh, and they're not tied to a land. That's an empty feeling. It's like somebody telling you you're space seed. You know, well, where did it come from? Or oh, they just flew in from space. And there's just this vastness out there and there's no attachment to any particular thing. So, we got a lot of problems going on, but we can solve them. They're, they're not hard to solve, I don't think. Um, we got to address them because we're 25% mentally ill in this country and they say that may be the tip of the iceberg. I kind of, I kind of believe it. Uh, living in New York, uh, that city's geared for making money, and that's it. And uh, there's some good people there, but you know, I felt it all until I read the stat. I said, "Oh God, that's that's it. Seventeen percent of Christians there." Um, I felt it. You know, I just got this vibe all the time. Um, I'm at thirty-three, thirty-three, so I gotta leave. I gotta go to bed. I have already had two hours. It's 11 o'clock. I, I worked out so hard. I was, whew. So, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I'll be making more videos. Uh, my book, uh, a couple of them, is on Amazon, a Kindle. Um, a Simple Path to Abundant Health. It's two years old, basically. Uh, I got a whole lot more to put in there. And the other one is, is Ed, Your Best Friend lose him. I had Ed. Ed's gone. So um, it works. I help some other people. And uh, buy my book. You help me out. And you know, I'm one of the top. Well, I've been, I was number one in London jazz for nine weeks. Guitarist composer from University of Miami, Florida. I was number one in Christian Rock in New York for 19 weeks. I'm number four, five, six, somewhere in there right now. And um, in jazz, I moved up six. Now I'm 242. I, I think it may have because I don't buy any, you know, ads or anything like that. So everything's political, probably. You know? So have a good night, 
and I'll be be posting more as the Lord leads.